yeah. talking freedom and liberation uh -huh. worldwide not just only for the nation a radical guide yeah. it's time to make changes yeah. bringing interviews and radical education yeah, yeah. a better future welcome to a radical podcast where we dive into the heart of resistance and explore the stories of those who challenge the norms and fight for a better world i'm your host jason bayless and today we're turning our focus to a country that's currently at the forefront of political and social upheaval, Argentina. Argentina, a nation known for its vibrant culture, passionate politics, and tumultuous history, is once again at a crossroads. The country is grappling with deep economic challenges, including soaring inflation, a burdensome national debt, and a population increasingly disillusioned with traditional political structures. These economic woes, interwoven with political shifts, have sparked widespread public discontent and demonstrations. But what's truly captivating in this unrest is the pivotal role of labor. Workers, unions, and collective movements are not just participants in these protests. They're at the very heart of this resurgence of resistance. And it's not a new story. Argentina has a rich, complex history of labor movements and anarchist resistance dating back to the early 20th century. In this episode, we're not just looking at the current protests. We're diving into how past struggles, the relentless fight of workers and anarchists throughout Argentina's history have shaped and continue to influence today's movements. How does the legacy of historical figures, labor rights battles, and anarchist philosophies echo in the chants and banners of today's protesters? From the streets of Buenos Aires to the remote corners of Jujuy, we'll unravel these threads, connecting the past and the present, and explore what this means for the future of Argentina, and perhaps for resistance movements globally. So stay with us as we journey through the bustling avenues of dissent in Argentina, unraveling the stories of resistance that define not just a nation, but the spirit of a global struggle for justice. Let's go. Today, we're zeroing in on a pressing issue in Argentina, striking at the heart of democratic freedoms and civil liberties. Under right-wing populist President Javier Millet, self-proclaimed anarcho-capitalist, and Security Minister Patricia Bullrich, the country has witnessed the introduction of approximately 300 changes, earmarking many government companies for privatization and loosening protections for renters, employees, and shoppers. These reforms represent a significant shift in the government's approach, not just economically, but also in terms of public dissent management. These measures have already sparked a significant response. Thousands have taken to the streets in Buenos Aires, rallying against these austerity measures and deregulation policies. Despite President Millet's warnings of a tough response to protests, these demonstrations have remained largely peaceful. However, the government's readiness to use federal forces to clear protests without judicial orders raises severe concerns about the erosion of civil liberties and the right to peaceful assembly. While framed as necessary for public order and safety, these policies are seen by many as a way for the government to control and limit dissent. The broader implications for democratic freedoms, like the right to peacefully assemble and express dissent, are significant. They potentially set a precedent for how governments in Argentina and globally might seek to regulate public expression and resistance. As we explore the developments in Argentina, it's crucial to understand the underlying political philosophies influencing the current landscape. One term we should understand is anarcho-capitalism, a key concept in President Malay's administration, which advocates for dismantling centralized states in favor of private property systems without government oversight. Additionally, understanding right-wing populism in the Argentine context helps us grasp the nature of Malay's leadership. This term refers to leaders who rally popular sentiments, often embracing nationalism and anti-establishment views, and positioning themselves as defenders of the common people against perceived elites. These concepts provide a framework for comprehending Argentina's significant social and political transformations. For a country with a history as politically vibrant and protest-rich as Argentina, these protocols are not just administrative changes. They are seen by many as direct threats to the sanctity of the right to protest, a right that's fundamental to any democracy. But what do these changes entail? How do they affect the average Argentine who wants to voice their concerns, frustrations, and demands on the streets? And importantly, what do these measures tell us about the current state of civil liberties in Argentina? 
To understand this, we need to dissect these protocols. For instance, one of the new policies involves stricter control over where and when protests can occur, potentially limiting spontaneous demonstrations. Another controversial aspect is the increased authority given to law enforcement to disperse crowds, which raises the specter of heightened police brutality. Critics of the current measures in Argentina point to a haunting precedent in the nation's own history. During the dirty war from 1976 to 1983, part of Operation Condor, the military dictatorship justified severe human rights abuses, including disappearances and torture in the name of national security. This period, known as the Guerra Sucia, saw military and security forces, along with death squads like the Argentine Anti-Communist Alliance, systematically hunting down political dissidents, those associated with socialism, left-wing Peronism, or the Montaneros movement. It was a time of state terrorism, where thousands were abducted, tortured, and often killed. This era serves as a grim reminder of how the veil of security can be used to suppress fundamental freedoms and dissent. These historical events in Argentina underscore the importance of scrutinizing current policies. When a government cites security to justify stringent measures, it's vital to ask, are we safeguarding public safety or stepping onto a slippery slope towards authoritarianism? These are crucial questions that reflect on the kind of society in Argentina primarily when the leaders focus more on capital than on people. Our exploration into the state of resistance in Argentina leads us now to a significant and concerning episode in Jujuy. According to a detailed report by Amnesty International, the province witnessed severe incidents of police brutality in response to protests. The Amnesty International investigation, released in October of 2023, sheds light on the harsh tactics employed by the Jujuy Provincial Police. These include arbitrary detentions, excessive use of tear gas, rubber bullets, and disturbing reports of physical assaults against demonstrators. Such measures were not just isolated incidents, but part of a systematic approach to criminalize and repress protests. As highlighted in the Amnesty Report, this pattern raises profound concerns about the erosion of civil liberties and the right to peaceful assembly in Argentina. The experiences documented by Amnesty International paint a vivid picture of the realities faced by those standing up against constitutional reforms in Jujuy. Ana Piquer, America's director at Amnesty International, states, Our investigation indicates that the provincial authorities have created a hostile environment that inhibits the people of Jujuy from exercising their right to peaceful protest. These events are a stark reminder of the lengths to which state apparatuses can go in suppressing dissent. The full article on Amnesty International's website is linked in the description for those interested in this report. We're now focusing on the dramatic shift in Argentina's political sphere with President Javier Malay's election. His anarcho-capitalist philosophy, promising to overhaul the political establishment, starkly contrasts traditional anarchist values. Malay's brand of anarchism centered on free market extremism, deviates markedly from traditional anarchism's communal and egalitarian principles. His administration has seen oppressive tactics against protests, embodying actions that traditional anarchism vehemently opposes. Notably, Mille's support base is predominantly male, and his positions on issues like abortion and sexual and reproductive rights are restrictive, aligning with the anti-gender rhetoric common among right-wing populists. Such stances are antithetical to the inclusivity and freedom championed by traditional anarchism. Further, Millet's security minister's declaration to use force against protests, warning of consequences for taking to the streets, starkly contrasts the anarchist ethos of resisting authoritarian control and safeguarding civil liberties. This raises profound questions about the nature of anarcho-capitalism and its place within the broader spectrum of anarchism. As Millet's presidency unfolds, it's essential to critically examine these ideologies and their real-world impacts on Argentina's political and social fabric. Let's dive into the nuances of President Millet's push for privatizing government companies in Argentina. This move is a cornerstone of his anarcho-capitalist agenda, which advocates for minimal government intervention in the economy, favoring private enterprise and market-driven solutions. Privatization, in theory, is often championed for bringing efficiency and innovation, driven by the competitive nature of the private sector. However, this shift can profoundly impact public access to essential services, 
when public entities responsible for crucial services like water, electricity, and health care transition to private ownership, it raises questions about affordability, equality of access, and accountability. There's a real risk that the needs of the less affluent are sidelined in favor of profit maximization. Anarcho-capitalism, as embraced by Malay, posits that a free, unregulated market is the ideal mechanism for societal organization. However, this perspective often overlooks the role of public entities in safeguarding the common good. In a purely market-driven system, disparities in wealth and power can become further entrenched, making services less accessible to those who need them most. In a society where essential services are privatized, the power dynamics shift. The capitalist model prioritizes shareholders and profits, potentially at the cost of the broader public interest. This raises ethical and practical concerns about social welfare, equity, and the government's role in protecting its citizens' rights and needs. As Argentina navigates these sweeping economic changes, it's crucial to consider the broader implications. Who stands to benefit from the privatization of public entities? How will this reshape the social fabric of the nation? And what does this mean for the principles of democracy and social justice in a landscape increasingly influenced by anarcho-capitalist ideology? In our earlier discussion, we highlighted President Malay's security minister's declaration to use force against protests. This stance has now manifested in concrete actions, significantly impacting Argentina's protest culture. Following the government's announcement to crack down on protests, particularly those blocking roads, we saw a massive response from the people of Buenos Aires. Thousands took to the streets, rallying against austerity measures introduced by Malay, which included a 50% devaluation of the peso and cuts to public spending. The protesters' chants and signs reflected their direct opposition to Malay's policies, criticizing the increase in utility costs and the broader economic impact. This public outcry indicates a deep-seated discontent with the administration's approach to economic and social issues. Critics, including prominent figures like former presidential candidate Miriam Bregman and Hector Dare, Secretary of the General Confederation of Labor, have accused Millet of constitutional violations and an attack on social and labor rights. They argue that Millet's measures subvert democratic order and disrupt the division of powers. These protests, which also honored the victims of past government repressions, were met with a significant police presence. However, the sheer number of demonstrators made it challenging for security forces to control the situation fully, showcasing the resilience and determination of the Argentine people in the face of governmental pressure. In light of President Malay's radical reforms, Argentina's labor unions and social organizations have expressed strong resistance. This is not just a contemporary response, but echoes a long tradition of labor activism in Argentina. Labor union leaders, wary of Malay's promises to slash the size of the state and privatize companies, have voiced concerns about these policies conflicting with their interests, particularly in areas of job creation and economic cuts. The General Confederation of Labor, a significant union body, has indicated a wait-and-see approach while maintaining readiness to respond if labor rights are impacted. This sentiment is echoed by other labor leaders and social organizations who are mobilizing to oppose Malay's government. The recent protests and marches reflect a broader concern about potential labor and human rights setbacks under Malay's administration. To truly grasp the current dynamics of labor's role in Argentina's protests, we need to dive into the deep historical roots of the labor and anarchist movements in this nation. Dating back to the early 20th century, Argentina's labor movement was significantly shaped by anarchist ideologies. The formation of the Argentine Workers' Federation in 1901, which later became the Regional Workers' Federation of Argentina, marked the beginning of a powerful alliance between labor and anarchism. These organizations, driven by anarchist principles, fought vigorously for workers' rights, advocating direct action and class warfare. Significant strikes in 1907 and 1909 exemplify this union's influence. The general strike of 1907, led by the Railway Engineers Union La Fraternidad, saw massive support from workers across various sectors. Again, in 1909, the labor movement responded forcefully to government repression, with tens of thousands participating in strikes that led the government to concede to several worker demands. However, the government's response to these movements was often harsh and repressive. The use of force, arrests, 
and even the suspension of constitutional guarantees were tactics employed to quell these uprisings. Laws like the law of residence and the law of social defense were specifically enacted to weaken the anarchist influence within the labor movement. This historical narrative is crucial to understanding today's labor movements in Argentina. They stand on the shoulders of a rich tradition of resistance and activism, continuing the struggle for social justice and equitable labor practices. The current responses to President Millet's policies are thus not just contemporary reactions, but are deeply rooted in a century-long history of labor activism intertwined with anarchist thought. As we wrap up this segment, it's important to acknowledge that our exploration of Argentina's challenges goes beyond mere observation. At a radical guide, we stand in solidarity with the people of Argentina as they navigate these turbulent times. Their struggle for rights, justice, and equity echoes the global call for change that we all must heed. Their resilience inspires us, and their fight reminds us of the power of collective action and solidarity in the face of adversity. A radical guy, that's what this that's is, what this highlighting is. the diverse world of resistance. As we shift gears, I'd like to express my heartfelt gratitude to our Patreon supporters, especially Juniper and Tara I. They have the honor of being our first supporters on Patreon. Tara has supported a radical guide since the beginning. Thank you. Your contributions are pivotal to a radical guide. For those yet to join, let me share the incredible perks your support can unlock. Our various tiers offer unique benefits. Starting from just $3 a month as a radical supporter, you become a part of our mission. For $5, as a community supporter, you'll get member shout outs, exclusive updates, and a vote in key decisions. As a radical influencer at $10, enjoy all these perks, plus a 10% discount at a radical shop and exclusive stickers. Stepping up as a revolutionary catalyst for $25, the rewards grow with a 15% shop discount and more. Our premium tier, the Visionary Architect, at $100, includes monthly online chats, content collaboration, a unique journal, and exclusive downloads. The Legacy Builder tier at $200 offers our highest level of engagement and rewards, including a 30% shop discount and annual exclusive merchandise. Your support funds crucial initiatives like educational deep dives, panel discussions, an upcoming global travel series, and in-depth podcasts on a spectrum of radical topics. By joining us on Patreon, you're not just supporting, you're actively shaping the future of a radical guide. So join us. Be a part of this vibrant community committed to exploring and supporting radical history and activism. Every contribution, big or small, strengthens our collective voice and our capacity to create impactful, thought-provoking content. You can become a member at patreon.com slash a radical guide. Link is in the description. I also want to highlight the profound histories and principles of organizations like the Organización Anarquista de Tucumán, OAT. You can find them on a radical guides map at RadicalGuide.com. Organización Anarquista de Tucumán, a pivotal group in Argentina, practices specifist anarchism, striving for popular power against patriarchal state and capitalist domination systems, with the ultimate goal of establishing libertarian socialism. Their philosophy is rooted in principles like self-management, direct action, direct democracy, federalism, feminism, solidarity and mutual support, anti-colonialism, classism, and internationalism. OAT actively builds a social force by establishing solidarity among the oppressed, promoting an egalitarian approach to resist systemic domination and championing freedom. Their commitment to these principles has significantly impacted Argentina, contributing to the broader anarchist movement and the global fight for social justice. Exploring the philosophy and actions of Organización Anarquista de Tucumán gives us a deeper understanding of the anarchist movement's dedication to freedom, equality, and solidarity. They stand as a testament to the ongoing relevance and vitality of anarchist ideals in contemporary struggles in Argentina and internationally. These resources on our website offer information and a deeper understanding and connection to these vital movements. Visit RadicalGuide.com to learn more about the Organización Anarquista de Tucumán and other influential groups shaping our world. Let's go! As we bring today's episode to a close, let's summarize our journey. 
We've explored the impact of Argentina's historic labor and anarchist movements on current protests and the significant implications for civil liberties arising from the government's recent actions under President Millet. We examined the organization Anarquista de Tucumán, highlighting their principles and continued relevance in today's struggle for justice and equality. These movements remind us that the pursuit of social change is ongoing and deeply rooted in history. I invite you to further engage with these topics. Explore more resources on RadicalGuide.com, consider supporting us on Patreon, and stay actively involved. Your participation is crucial in the global quest for justice and equity. Thank you for joining us on a Radical Podcast. Until next time, remember, follow ideas, not people. Yeah, talking freedom and liberation. Worldwide, not just only for the nation. A radical guide, it's time to make changes. Bringing interviews and radical education. Yeah, yeah, a better future, what we really need. Not rooted in capitalism or supremacy. Yeah, yeah, trust, you don't want to miss it. We bring the truth right to you. The past, present, and future, let's go. A radical guide, that's what this is. Highlighting the diverse world of resistance. Let's go.